Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica saying, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The trumpet of God is what the full group sing about when the roll is called up yonder. Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures in order to find the answers from God's holy word. Question number one, where did God come from? How did he become a being? The questioner is asking something which emits from our entire experience as human beings. Our cars had a beginning. Our houses did not always exist. They had a starting point. Our lives have a starting point. Everything about us, we are able to trace back to some point, even the earth itself. We read in Genesis chapters 1 and 2 of how that there was a beginning. And so for us to consider something that didn't have a beginning really stretches our thoughts and pushes us beyond our own experience. But we read in Psalm 90 and verse 2, before the mountains were born or you gave birth to the earth and the world, and then this, ver this line, even from everlasting to everlasting you are God everlasting past and everlasting future, you are God. Psalm 93 and verse 2, your throne is established from of old, you are from everlasting. Pointing back that God had no beginning, he never became a being. 
Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27, of old you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Even they will perish, but you endure, and all of them will wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. God did not have a beginning. He has always been and always will be. If we trace God as having an origin, then we need to find, well, what was the cause of that point of origin? Where did God have his beginning? And so it continues to lead back. Was there a God of God somewhere in the past? And the answer is no. The scripture declares from everlasting to everlasting, everlasting past to everlasting future, you are God. Question number two, where was God when he created the heaven and the earth? Once again, this presses our own experience. We are in one place at one time. I am here in Winnipeg. I'm not in London, England, or I'm not in some uh, Cairo, Egypt, or Tokyo, Japan. I am here and here only. That does not mean that I cannot travel to these other places, but then I will be there and I will not be here at my home in Winnipeg. God, however, once again, just as his existence in eternity to eternity, once again, we are pressed to understand that God is omnipresent. He is not limited as we are. Psalm 139 and verse 7 to 10 helps us with this. We read, where can I go from your spirit, David writes? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. In 1 Kings chapter 8, and verse 27, the dedication prayer of the temple which Solomon had constructed, we read in verse 27, will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built, a humble declaration of great King Solomon that even though his temple was so elaborate, it was a pittance. It was a pittance in comparison with the glory of God and the magnitude of God. So when we ask the question, well, where was God when creation took place? He was in the same place he has always been. He has been omnipresent. He is here with us in Canada. He is in Argentina. He is in uh, Australia. He is all around this world and in the farthest reaches of the universe. That is what the scriptures declare. Question number three, where in the Bible does it tell when the other planets were created? I take you to Genesis chapter one, and this is the account along with chapter two of the world's creation, but most especially chapter one focuses in on the physical details. Chapter two particularly focuses in on the creation of Adam and Eve, but chapter one we read in verse 16, God made the two great lights, the sun and the moon. Those are the great lights, which we of course see almost every day if there isn't heavy cloud cover. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And then this, this uh, ever so brief line at the end of ch chapter one, verse 16, the stars also, that amazes me that there's sort of this toss away reference to the stars and to all of the other heavenly bodies that are out there. Now, we realize that many of the uh, planets, they 
reflect the sun, though of course nowhere near the radiance of the moon, but yet some of the planets yet reflect the sun's rays and they are visible with the naked eye. However, here when it says the stars also, that word stars may be rightly and appropriately including the planets, those heavenly bodies up there. God made Saturn and Jupiter. He made all of the moons that orbit those other planets and all of these he made. It wasn't any big deal for God to make all of that. The stars also, the heavenly bodies also. He put them in place in such fantastic number that we strain ourselves to comprehend how many there are and how vast they are, but there they are, the creation of God. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi, Terry, Tim now sing Goodbye World, Goodbye, and that is followed by Rick Bowring singing Nearing the Shore. i 
troubles soon will be Joseph and Mary were to call his name Jesus. That is the title which we have given to our brand new Christmas CD, and we would love to send a copy to you. All of our resources are sent free and postage paid, and there is no difference with this one. Call his name Jesus. Our German-speaking singers, German musicians who are a part of Faith to Live By, have also teamed up, and they have produced a German-language CD of Christmas music and scripture readings. Both the English and the German CD have scripture readings interspersed among the songs. I know that you will enjoy these. Ask for the one or both of them. If you wish, you are most welcome to them. These are an extension of the ministry of Faith to Live By, and we are delighted to see them put to good use. Ask for your copies, free and postage paid, when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6 or call us toll free 1 833 367 3852. If you get a busy signal or you get the answering machine, do leave a message. And during this busy time of the year, we will see that your request is cared for or you may. Uh, dial in or type in to faithtoliveby.ca, which is our website. Now, Heidi, Dorothy, Jan sing, We'll cast our crowns at his feet. <laughs>
come and see. That was the invitation which was issued by Philip to Nathanael when he, with great doubt, wondered about this fellow by the name of Jesus who Philip was telling him about. John chapter 1 is where I want to direct you today. Chapter 1 of John is a remarkable single chapter in the Bible. John, he introduces Jesus and begins into his evangelistic tone in a different way than Matthew or Luke most certainly, and even different than Mark. He does not start with Bethlehem. He goes even farther back than that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. We are introduced very quickly to John the Baptist, the one who is sent as a forerunner to prepare the way. And we read that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He tabernacled. He pitched his tent right in the midst of our dwelling. And we saw his glory, John writes, glory unparalleled, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, chock full, we might say, full of grace and truth. We read of the testimony of John the Baptist and how that he was very quick to declare that he was not the Messiah. He was not the one that the people were looking for, but that he had come to point the way and that the one who would come after him was so incredibly much greater than he that he was not worthy to even untie the sandal of that great one. Then in John chapter 1, verse 35, John is baptizing and two of his disciples are with him. And John once again cries out, Behold the Lamb of God, as he sees Jesus walking. The two disciples are very curious, and they follow after Jesus. And Jesus turns to them and says, What are you seeking? And they say, what, Where are you staying? And Jesus says, Come. And they spend that day together. Jesus starts to invest in these. He starts to pour into them. One of the two who heard John the Baptist speak and followed him was a fellow by the name of Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Andrew goes and he fetches his own brother and he says, come on, I want you to meet a man. I want you to see someone. And Jesus encounters Peter. But that is not all. The conclusion of chapter 1 of John is this. The next day, Jesus purposed to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Now, Philip was not a Hebrew name. That was a Greek name, and it speaks of Philip's relationship within the nation of Israel. Philip might be considered as an outsider, named after Philip of Macedon, Alexander the Great's father. But Philip is who Jesus seeks out, possibly at this very earliest point, seeking him out, knowing that the gospel which he was bringing was not simply for the community of the Jews, the ancient covenant people of God, but that it was for a much wider audience and it would go out to them in time. He seeks out Philip and Jesus says to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. That was up roundabout Galilee, and there was a tremendous Greek influence there, a foreign influence, so that many of the Jews down in the south, they disdained this part of the country, and they didn't really want to have anything to do with it. Now, Philip, he goes and finds a friend by the name of Nathaniel and says to him, we have found him whom Moses wrote in the law and also the prophets, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And here, Philip, he is saying, this is the Messiah that for hundreds of years we have been waiting for, we found him. 
And Philip replies, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. I would want that to be something I encourage each and every Canadian, each and every person all around the world to do. Come and see this man who is unlike any other, who has come into this world at the specific design and plan and bidding of his Father God that he might be our Savior, that he might save us from our sins, that he might redeem us, and that he might transfer us from citizens of this earth to citizens of glory, citizens of heaven. I would bid you to come and see this man called Jesus. He cares for you. He loves you. He, in fact, died for you, and he bids you come to him. Come today and know life in his name. Thank you for joining Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 